Welcome to the channel, I'm FaceCast, and this is a chapter 9 guide and walkthrough. Someone in a YouTube comment was struggling with this chapter, and we're here to help, so let's go. If you want to see more Survivor.io videos in the future, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and like this video. In addition, check out the link in the description of this video to get a free gift from NordVPN. To get the free gift, you have to sign up using the link in the description of this video. The objective is to use close combat skills, open boxes for useful items like bombs and magnets, loot as much as you can, and kite the enemy to avoid damage. I like to go with a hybrid tank build that turns you into a lawnmower capable of mowing over hordes of monsters and heals you, allowing you to do things like taking damage or even running over puddles of lasting damage caused by enemy butterflies. There are many different weapons you can use here. For example, the bat may work well to knock the enemy back and make space for your character to move, but the light chaser is the preferred weapon to use in chapters with extremely close quarters, as it can deal massive damage automatically in every direction. Combine the Light Chaser with Ronin Oyori to evolve into Eternal Light to make an even stronger incarnation of the weapon. Additionally, the Kunai is also a great weapon to use in these types of chapters, as it can also automatically shoot in every direction around you. Since Chapter 9 is compact and has butterflies that leave puddles of lasting damage when they die, the first skill I want to take a look at is the Molotov slash Fuel Barrel. The fire caused by the Molotov and the Fuel Barrel, which is the evolved version of the Molotov, will scorch the earth around you and essentially remove puddles of lasting damage caused by butterflies. This can give you more space to move around when butterflies approach. In addition, defeating butterflies with flames will not leave behind any lasting damage. Combine the Molotov and Oil Bond to create the Fuel Barrel for more range and a faster fire rate. The second skill is the Force Field Force Barrier that produces a glowing aura around you that deals damage and pushes the enemy back when they get too close. When the force field is combined with the energy drink, it will evolve into the force barrier, an even stronger barrier. In addition, the energy drink used to create the evolved skill will restore a percentage of your health every couple of seconds. The guardian summons tops to visually spin around you, and when combined with the exo bracer, the guardian will evolve into the defender, an even stronger version of itself. The defender can essentially act as a lawnmower that causes damage to enemies who touch the rotating tops and knocks them back. The durian is a giant fruit that bounces bounces around your screen from one side to the other. In theory, this can create escape routes if the enemy closes in on you. It is also easier to control in such a compact level that it may be helpful against hordes of enemies and bosses because it can get to one side quicker. Combine the durian with HE field to create the evolved skill Caltrops, a much stronger version of the durian that shoots projectiles in every direction. You may also need to use a skill to assist you in defeating bosses. And if that's the case, I suggest going with something like the Supercell or laser launcher, as these are both great boss killers. With the supercell skill, you don't actually have to aim, the boss just needs to be on the screen, and this skill will automatically target the boss. Combine the lightning emitter and energy cube to create the supercell evo skill. Fun fact, supercell is actually the name of the developer who created Clash of Clans and Clash Royale. Another skill that can be used in place of the supercell is the laser launcher. The laser launcher may require more focus to use, but it deals high damage to bosses, and it works well in this chapter against groups of monsters as space is limited. To use the laser launcher effectively, you may need to kite the boss, which essentially means to run around it or away from it in this scenario, and trick them into running towards the laser. For the first 1 minute and 30 seconds, you will fight cats who have mid to short ranged attacks. At this point of the match, it's advised to upgrade your weapon if you can since it starts off with 1 star. At the 2 minute mark is the first boss and it's the bounce bloom. Avoid taking damage from the bounce bloom by running the opposite direction it's facing. In addition, the projectiles launched by the the bounce bloom are slow and easy to avoid. After the first boss, butterflies will make their first appearance, and butterflies will leave lasting damage when they die, unless you kill them using the Molotov, so you might want to try to get that before the butterflies approach. At 4 minutes is another boss assault, and the rusher Papillon butterfly will appear. This boss will launch projectiles and rush towards you, so it's advised to keep a safe distance, and you can do this by kiting the boss. After this, monsters with orange backs will appear. They are relatively easy to defeat, but the sheer number can be overwhelming. At 5 minutes, another mini boss will appear, a pink monster with yellow spikes, and it creeps towards you as well as launches projectiles your way, so keep your eyes open. At 6 minutes, another boss assault will appear, and the rush Nasher boss will make an appearance. This boss will rush towards you. When you see a red line coming your way, move to the side or diagonal from the boss to avoid taking damage. Once the boss is defeated, a mini boss will appear holding a megaphone alongside zombie construction workers with high HP. Simply kite the mini boss and do your best to 
collect loot and open boxes while surrounded by zombie construction workers. At 7 minutes is another boss assault, and the Raging Bull will appear. The Raging Bull is quick and will chase you around the map, so make quick movements to evade its attacks. Once the boss has been defeated, a mini boss that looks like a bat will appear alongside smaller, similar looking monsters. Just like with other mini bosses and other bosses in this chapter, it is best to simply kite the boss to defeat it and avoid taking damage. At the 8 minute mark is the final boss assault alert and the blowout bull boss will appear. This boss will launch projectiles that seem to explode after a certain duration, as well as charge at you. So just like with every other boss, try to kite it, move around it, and don't let it damage you. That's easier said than done. <laughs> I know. But if you have a chance to grab an extra supply like sports shoes, you can increase your movement speed to make it easier to kite these bosses. Thank you so much for watching this chapter 9 walkthrough. If you have any questions or want to share advice about this chapter, that's great. Put it in the comments below. Thanks again. Smash like, subscribe, and have a great day. I'll see you guys later.